Welcome to Woodworking Wisdom with me, Sean Evely, where we're going to be cutting a half lap dovetail. The tools you'll need are a rip saw, a crosscut saw, a bevel edge chisel set, a router plane, a marking knife, a marking gauge, a square, a dovetail marker, I'm using a 1 in 8 ratio, a mallet, a rule and a pencil. A half lap dovetail is a mixture between a half lap joint and a dovetail. It's decorative but very strong. It's commonly used in cabinetry and on the top rails of furniture. So let's cut the joint. The first thing you got to do, like always, is establish your face sides. So I'm going to pick the most decorative grain for this. I like the long straight grain to be on the top. So I'm going to mark that. Now you can make your dovetail protrude slightly if you want to flush it off later or make it flush to begin with. I'm going to have it protrude just slightly so then I can sand it off later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dovetail board onto the other one using my fingers just to measure a slight overlap about one or two millimeters. And I'm going to make a mark in the corner of the dovetail board. So now with that knife mark, I'm going to use my square and mark a shoulder line. Remember to reference your square off one of the face sides each time. I'm only going to do the bottom three faces though. I'm going to leave the top one for the moment. The reason I'm not doing a shoulder line on the top just yet is because I want to mark out the dovetail and I don't want a line going all the way across the board because that's unnecessary material I'll have to remove later. So I'm going to get my dovetail marker. I've got a 1 in 8 ratio here. I think that's really pleasing to the eye. And I'm just going to line it up to the corner and draw a line down. I'm going to do that on either side, line up with the corner, and draw a line. So now I know this area is going to be the waist. So with my square, I don't need to draw a line all the way across. I just need to mark that little bit on the edge. Now to mark the thickness of your dovetail, I've preset my marking gauge to half the thickness of the material. This doesn't need to be extremely accurate because we're going to keep this set to mark the opposite board on the face side as well. So I'm just going to draw a line like that, gently at the beginning and then gradually getting deeper. And then just so I'm cutting perfectly square. I'm going to use my square and carry on those dovetail lines on the top surface. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out, clean it up, and then we can mark out the mortise. So when you're cutting these dovetails, the most important thing is to cut in a straight line. Even if you're veering off the line, don't turn the saw blade back on track. You just got to keep cutting in the direction the saw's going. If you don't do that, you'll end up with a curved wall and then it's impossible to then cut a curved line, the straight saw in the mortise. So roughly line up the saw with the dovetail mark you made and cut straight down to that marking gauge line. It doesn't matter if you're slightly off.
So for those dovetails, as you can see, I slightly veered off to the left here and slightly veered off to the left here. But I didn't turn the saw blade, I just kept on cutting in a straight line because when we mark out the mortise, we're going to cut the mortise to fit this perfectly. And you're not going to notice in the final joint that it's not perfectly 1 in 8 ratio. So for the dovetail cut, I was aiming to cut on the line. However, for the thickness of the dovetail, I'm going to cut off the line and pair back with a chisel. So now all the rip cuts are done, I'm going to switch over to the cross cut saw to remove all this waste. Again, I'm not going to cut on that marking line, I'm going to go a millimetre off so then I can pair back neatly with the chisel. Okay, so now I've removed all the waste, I'm going to head over to the bench dogs and use a router plane to clean up this face. And I'm going to use the other board as a bit of support on the other side so the router plane doesn't tip. So I'm just taking small passes until I meet that marking gauge line. Okay, so that surface is now done. I'm now going to move over to this chisel to pair back these shoulders. Taking little bits off at a time and then eventually moving over to my biggest chisel to put that into that marking line 
to make that final cut. You want to use the largest chisel you have so you get the straightest line. I'm now going to move over to the bench vise to add a little undercut to make sure there's no high spots. An undercut is when you remove a tiny bit of material on the inside of the joint lower than the marking line. You don't want to go lower than the marking line on the outside. You want to keep this faint white line here. But on the inside, you lift up the handle ever so slightly to remove a bit more material, literally only a fraction of a millimeter. And that's going to ensure there is no high spots higher than this marking gauge line that will prevent the joint from seating snugly together. You can also use a rule to put on the surface. And if it's touching at the front and back and 
there's a tiny little gap in the middle, that's what you want. If it's off one of the edges, you know that the middle is too high. Okay, so that dovetail is complete. Now we're going to bring it over to the other board. Check that shoulder line, that looks pretty good. And now very carefully I'm going to mark out the dovetail with the marking knife. You really want to push this joint in and butt up that shoulder here. You could use a clamp if you wanted to. I'm just going to line that up, hold it down and with my marking knife I'm going to follow the dovetail and draw a line Okay, so now I've got the dovetail marked out, I'm going to carry on those lines down on the faces with my knife, put that into the cut I just made, butt up the square and draw down to the centre of the board. I'm going to do the same on the other side, still referencing off the face side with the square. Now with my marking gauge still set to the same position and referencing off the face side, I'm going to mark that line. Okay, so we've got the mortise all marked out going to go back to the bench vise and remove most of the material away with a crosscut saw. I'm not going to go right up to the line, I'm going to pair that back with a chisel. Okay, so now we've loosened all that material, I'm going to hog away most of that waste with a chisel. I'm going to position the face side, the area of the joint that you're going to see towards me. Because if it was away from me, as I'm hitting with a chisel, there's a risk that I'm going to chisel too much and break out material here. 
whereas I want this to be as clean as possible so I can see where I'm chiseling. And if anything breaks out on this side, that's going to be hidden inside the joint. So I'm going to clamp this down to the workbench. So now I've removed most of that waste, I'm going to go back to the router plane and clean up. Let's do that again. So now I've removed most of that waste, I'm going to go back to the router plane and clean that up. Now that's nice and clean, I'm going to use a chisel to clean up these walls.
So before I assemble the joint, I'm going to go back to the bench vise just to have a look at these walls, see if there's any high spots, and then we're going to put it together. Okay, so both components are now cut. Let's give it a test fit. It's pretty snug. Yeah, that fits nicely. What I'm gonna do now is take it apart, add some glue, and that is the joint complete. So because I'll be sanding this joint after, I'm gonna add glue on all the surfaces, and if there's any squeeze out, it doesn't matter because I'll be removing it later. The good thing about adding glue on all the surfaces is if there are any gaps, the glue can often fill those or at least swell the wood grain and uh, the wood itself will fit it in. Clamp is going to help get this together. There we go. All right, so I'm going to let this sit overnight and in the morning we'll see what it looks like. So that is the lap dovetail. It's obviously a dextral joint, but it's much stronger than a standard half lap. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.